Inside of the Qlist window of LightShark, there's a number of things that we can do to modify cues that we've already created. The first of those is deleting. To delete a cue, simply go ahead, press the delete key either in the window here or on an LS1 console, and then press the number of the cue which is in the selected cue list that you want to delete. I'm going to delete this first cue here. As you can see, the cues automatically renumber. You can tell it renumbered because this one is still named Q2 and it used to be in the second position. Copying works very similarly. First, we'll press the cue number that we want to copy, then press the copy key, and then press the cue list we want to copy to. The cue is now copied in that cue list and if we navigate to it, we can see there are now four cues. There were previously three, and the fourth cue is called copy Q2 in the name field. So we know that it's a copy of the second cue that was recorded into this console, which is on this first cue list. Moving cues works in a very similar way. We'll go to the second cue list here, press the cue that we want to move, say this one we just copied, press move and press where we want it to go. For this example, I clicked the second cue, which was named Q4, and that cue was bumped down to make room for the cue that was copied from the other cue list. The cue list options allow you to change a number of different attributes of the cue list itself. You get to the cue list options by pressing this three dot menu within the cue list window. As you can see, we have a number of options here. We can set it to deactivate after the last queue. We can set deactivate to reset to the first queue. Turn this off if you don't want your queue list to lose its place. You can set it to halt the last queue so that it pauses on the last queue. And you can set it to block effects from other playbacks. This can be useful if you have a queue list with effects in it and you want to make sure that that effect always gets through. Similarly, the deactivate time allows you to set a timing to the stop or deactivation of the cue list. So if you want a cue list to fade out when you deactivate it, you can set that time here. On the chase window of the settings menu, located on the left hand side, we could set the chase attributes. We can set it to go forwards, backwards, random, or to pong back and forth where the chase goes forward then goes backward to the start, then goes forward again, and backward to the start on repeat. You can also set the chase speed, crossfade, and the amount of loops that the chase will complete. To hide these options, press this down arrow at the top of the options window. As I mentioned in the last video, step mode allows you to operate a more theatrical style cue list, but You'll notice that by default, if I bring the fader up here, the cues just go through on their own at the appointed fade times. And while that's nice, it's not what we want in this case. So I'm going to go ahead, set my wait time to zero. I do that by long pressing on the wait time. And then I set my wait time by typing in zero. Now, when the console gets around to this queue, it stops. And once I set halt for all my queues, this will now operate like a regular theatrical queue list moving forward when you press the go button.